Hey, today we're gonna paint some 3D printed HO scale parts. And uh, what you'll see is they're a lot like painting metal castings. Uh, there is some prep work and priming, of course, uh, but there's no parting lines like you get with metal castings and the detail is a much higher quality. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, before we do that, be sure you hit subscribe so we can keep making more videos and let's get to the workbench. Okay, so one of the things you'll notice on some 3D printed parts is that they come like this. Uh, they are attached to a base uh, with all this support work underneath because um, when they're printed, they are printed upside down uh, and sometimes in an angle to get the best print. So we need these supports when printing, which is fine. They just need to be cut away. And you want to do that before you do any painting. In theory, you could prime this and then paint it. Uh, as is, but you're going to be chipping away at some of the plastic, some of the resin, uh, and you might remove some of the paint. So it's easier to just to get it over with. And the easiest way is to use these uh, flush cut nippers. And these are the same kind of nippers you could use to cut sprues and plastic kits. And you just start cutting away. Uh, some of these parts can be fragile. In this case, they're not, but don't force uh, any of these parts away. Wait till you cut a good amount of the fretwork, the uh, supports, and then like at this point, you can just pull these away. There will be some spots you might need to use a file to clean up, which we will do. So you can find yourself a jeweler's file. Uh, you should already have one in your modeling tool set. Uh, this is just a, sort of a pointy one, but it's got a flat side. And we could just file very gently. The small pieces of resin that are sticking from those supports. And generally they're placed on the back of an object or underneath. Um, so you can see here they're on the bottoms. Uh, you can file it a little bit so it sits flat on the ground. You don't really need to, but you can. So now we need to prime uh, these parts and you're going to do so just as you would with metal castings. Um, other than the cleanup of those little supports, they're very similar to, to painting castings. So I've got myself a paper plate here and I'm putting down some 3M tape so I can stick my details to the plate so they don't fly away while we're spraying them. So I'm using a red primer. Uh, this is a Krylon. Just use gray or red, uh, any primer that you have. When you're spraying, of course, use ventilation, proper ventilation and a, and a respirator. Uh, and never start on your object. Always start off to the right or to the left. Uh, because usually the first, the first shot out is uh, a little too much. So you wanna start off the object. Don't try to get it all at once, otherwise you'll get a uh, too thick a coat. So these need to dry thoroughly. Uh, you can speed up the drying by fanning them with a piece of cardboard. This actually will uh, dry them pretty quickly. Okay, so now we have a nicely primed uh, lathe here that's ready to go. Uh, you can see it's got a nice flat finish, which means it'll take the paint nicely. Uh, but we don't want to hold it with our fingers to paint it. Um, this is a great little tool. I'll leave a link in the description where to get it. Uh, someone recommended this to me after a previous video watching me paint uh, more of my fingers than an actual object. Uh, and it's been a real handy tool. So you just stick it on there. It's got some clay at the end and a handle. And now we can paint it without uh, making too much of a mess and damaging the object. And I'm using light green. This is from a great company called Archive X. They're in the UK. And it's a really nice uh, thin acrylic. And they've got great hobby colors like uh, the old polyscale colors like grimy black. 
and reefer white and everything else. Uh, this is a small flat brush, uh, which is perfect for this job. Now there's parts on here that will be silver and um, metallic, but I'm going to try to just paint the whole thing green. And then we could do the smaller detail stuff after the fact. Okay, so now we have to identify what parts are what colors next. Uh, in this case, uh, with any casting or detail, if you don't uh, have a familiarity with, say, a large machine like this, just Google it and you'll get a reference photo. Um, so basically what we have to do next is uh, paint some silver handles and silver parts um, using this uh, AK metallic color. This is natural steel, uh, which is, seems right for what we're doing. So I've got a very small brush. And I'm going to be try, try to be as careful as I can. And there's a handle here. There. There's a little wheel here. And the lathe chuck would be silver here. So now we need to paint some of these black handles. Um, we're using uh, paint from uh, Mission Models. This is tire black, and it's a nice uh, dull black. It's not a shiny black. It's more like a t grimy black color. And there, there are a couple of spots that need some red. Uh, so again, we're using our Archivex paint. Uh, this is Southern Pacific Scarlet. I would assume that's what the SP is for. Uh, maybe not. But uh, it's a nice safety red. Okay, so now we have our colors uh, all in place. Now we need to decide what to weather it and what to uh, use as, like, say, a wash. Um, for some items, you would rust them. Some items, you can just make them dark and dirty. Uh, in this case, this really wouldn't be rusted because it's a machine that's taken care of, but it's still going to be worked. Uh, so we're going to use a black wash that would have... Uh, look like soot in a in a machine shop or a welding shop so i've got some oil paint here this is lamp black these are artist oils and i've got a nice uh, soft brush here with some mineral spirits i'm just going to go back and forth until i get a black wash on my palette here and then just start applying it over the entire object and if you do too much, you can always just use mineral spirits and it'll thin it out. But you'll see that it's very much like a um, ink wash where it just gets in all the little cracks and details and highlights them. We're gonna do one final uh, application to this lathe. I've got some silver paint here again. And we're gonna just dry brush some of the edges of the machine uh, where maybe paint chipped. And we're gonna be very subtle. You see that line? We don't want to do much more than that. Do it at the top of the casing here. Again, get as much paint off the brush as you can. And maybe here, 
where the operator would be working would be more worn than the rest. So we're going to put a little bit extra here. Again, it's very subtle. It doesn't have to be a heavy handed application. So some objects are pretty simple, uh, like a trash can, of course. Uh, it's all one color. I've got my silver stainless steel paint out. So I'm just going to hit this while it's still stuck to our plate here. This is another way to paint them without touching them. Okay, we have our trash can here, um, and we have to weather it a little bit. So all we need to do uh, is put a wash over it. You could do a black wash for a really you know, grimy, dirty trash can, or a rust wash, or both. So we're just going to do some rust. And this is dipped into a little bit of mineral spirits. And we will put a little bit of black on the bottom. Just kind of let it bleed up a little bit. And really that's all that's needed to weather a trash can. So this is a rooftop uh, dust collector. And I'm going to switch metallics. This is a gunmetal, uh, also from AK. Um, I just want a little different, darker uh, silver for this object. So we have our dust collector here, and we need to put some uh, some rust on it. Uh, we're going to do it with two different colors. Uh, first, we're going to do a sort of a base uh, chip around some of the edges uh, with this dark brown color. This is a Martha Stewart color we use a lot. Uh, it's called Vanilla Bean. And we're going to apply it with this little cosmetic wedge sponge. Uh, this sponge is pretty good because it's got very small, uh, fine holes. We don't want something too big, like a grout sponge for this. I'm going to take some of the paint off. I don't want too much. It's kind of like dry brushing. You just want a little bit. So for uh, ducts or pipes like these, you want to mostly concentrate with the damage or rust on the top of the pipe, where it's exposed to the elements from, the, from above. And then kind of like an oil drum, some of the rust will be at the seams. So you can see just the very edges of this object have been hit with the sponge. It's very subtle. <clears throat> it's almost uh, similar to the color of the object itself, but that's just what we need as a base for our next uh, coat of rust. So now we're using a rust color from uh, Ammo, and this is uh, dark rust acrylic paint. So again, I'm using my cosmetic sponge. I'm gonna get some of the paint off, but I really don't need a lot. I'm just hitting the very edge.
Now, sometimes you can see here at the top of the exhaust duct, that might be a little too much rust colored paint, which is fine. I can go back with my gunmetal silver paint and just knock it down a bit. So as a final step to uh, our rusting this object, the dust collector, I'm going to take some burnt umber oil paint and using a toothpick, I'm going to just flick it on the body of the dust collector in a couple of spots. That will make some rust spots. Some of them you can leave, some of them you can drag down. So now we can paint this uh, small little work cabinet. Uh, this has got a lot of small detail, so uh, what you want to do, kind of like the lathe, is paint the biggest, largest uh, color uh, first, which would be the cabinet. So we're going to use a red. Uh, this is Caboose Red, again from Archive X. Pretty much finished right there. Um, it's not a perfect uh, job, especially on the smallest pieces. Um, you can see little screw-ups with the paint, but you're really not going to see that in the scheme of things, uh, especially when we put a wash over it, which I'm going to use burnt umber. And you can see again, like the lathe, it starts to fill in all the details, all the cracks. and it'll just blend all the uh, mistakes away. So I hope you can see that painting 3D detail parts is just as easy as painting metal parts. Uh, the only difference, of course, is the detail quality is much higher with the 3D stuff, uh, and that's a good thing. So check them out. Uh, we've got a bunch of 3D parts on our website. And uh, be, please be sure to subscribe to the channel so we can keep making you more videos. See you next time.